I'm very happy to have another young Indian with us as part of the Voice of the Young series. Hello, everyone. Good to be back with another young Indian. Uh, right now, we have with us Sonali Zol. Let's listen to her. Over to you, Sonali. Thank you, sir. So good, good evening. This is Sonali Zol. Right now, I am in Maker, District Bulldhana. I had did my master's degree from Pune University in computer engineering, that is the post-graduation. And recently I'm selected as a delegate of India in Conference of Youth 18, which is conducted by United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change, where COP28 has been happened. So as we know that uh, there are various summits, international summits has been happened recently in India. So let me uh, tell about myself that I have did some courses from UNITAR, that is United Nations Institute of Training and Research. And then also from Indian Institute, that is ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. And right now I had, I'm pursuing PG diploma from CDAC, Ministry of Electronics and Telecommunication, where I learned about supercomputer. So this is overall what I'm doing right now. And previously I worked in Ministry of Statistics as well. Uh, that was my uh, contractual job. And even I was selected as a program organizer in Maharashtra Industrial Development, uh, Entrepreneurship Development. So MCED, it is known as. So it falls under Ministry of Industries. Now let me talk about the summit that I have attended. Sure. So the first, so the, I, I'm a member of Yongo UNFCC that is the official youth constituency of United Nation. And then also I am a member of United Nation Environment Program where I had represented youth, a major group of youth and children in United Nation Environment Program for legally binding plastic treaty. So let me explain some a few about what is legally binding plastic treaty. So as we know that there are the plastic pollution that has been happening and that has been thrown out in ocean as well as on land. So to protect uh, these, uh, as, uh, I mean, these, whatever the polluted areas. So there is one conference and meeting that has been held by the United Nation. So it's a legally binding plastic treaty where all 197 countries come together and they uh, decide the draft pollution that what should be included, how it could be protected and what rules to be um, uh, there, what rules should be there. So marine litters is also one of the thing that has, that we can see it has been, uh, I mean, uh, it has been thrown in ocean. So to protect all these things, uh, there is this kind of treaty. So I represented major group of youth and children and I had provided the solution for it. Now, next thing is that uh, G20 summit. So I have been attended, I had attended G20 summit in Mumbai, as well as G20 Interfaith Summit, which was held in Pune. So I attended that. So in that G20, there was an energy transition side event. So where it has been said that how India is growing in energy sectors, what we can do, and how multilateralism banking system will be working to, uh, to develop all these sectors. So these were the discussions that has been happened. Second, I have attended a G20 T20, that is Think Tank 20. So here urbanization, then uh, various sectors, how the growth should be there in uh, various sectors. And uh, in G20 Interface Summit, there was a discussion on peace. So how peace would be there in the war zone, as we know that there are the Israel and Palestine war zone is happening. So the conflict in this kind of conflict situation, how the countries can come together, how uh, uh, NGO, non-governmental organization can come together and how they could work. So this kind of discussion has been happened and there were various dignitaries like uh, UNESCO head, uh, I mean the chair, and then uh, there were the dignitaries from uh, University of Oxford. So I have met such kind of leaders. Yes, sir. And uh, second thing, as a delegate of India in COI 18, so I, I haven't attended right now, it was in Dubai, but I would share my experience that what is UNFCC? 
so united nation framework convention for climate change this is the conference where youth can uh, share their voices about the climate changes what are the issues that has been there in their regions so as we know that in south africa right now the people were facing from uh, um, a drought uh, from the drought situation even the unemployment rate is high at there so there are various friends of mine in south africa they were discussing such kind of issues but i think that rather than raising the voice we should focus on the solution and we should focus that how it could be implemented by the youth through the united nation so i used to give such kind of a uh, uh, solution whenever there is a global youth position paper that has been given to us by the youth constituency so i used to write it that these are the solution and you should focus on this now next thing is that i would like to talk about the isro uh -huh. indian space organization so there from there i have completed few courses so that few courses are web gis i mean uh, geographical information system and then earth observation system that what it is and then radar technology so radar technology means the satellite is detecting what is happening over the earth and by using the image processing technology now this is the different kind of words that has been i am using as i am a computer engineer student so um, image processing means uh, as we know that there are oceans and if tsunami is going to happen in the ocean then the there is a camera on the satellite so it will detect the waves and that waves will, on the basis of that waves they will that uh, technology will detect that whether the tsunami is going to happen or not so such kind of image processing is there it's a huge algorithm we have to develop then next is uh, uh, to reduce the carbon carbon cycle so i have did that course also uh, there is one instrument that has been sent uh, set up in the area where uh, that instrument will detect how much carbon is released in the air and what we can do so such kind of database is also there now and the third one is that i like about the isro that is the archaeological survey so there uh, as we know that we have a monuments uh, historical monuments so in historical monuments if it is getting damaged like for example i'm just giving if suppose the taj mahal is there we are saying that oh it's a beautiful monument but what's going to what what is there inside in the structure whether it is getting damaged or not due to the weather condition so that has been detected by the satellite by the radar technology so such kind of uh, technology i have learned and then i am sharing with the united nation as well that we are having such technology we can use it and we can also skill the youth as well so that they would be having the hand in these kind of skills and then they can have their own development now the second thing i would like to say about the cdac meti cdac uh -huh. meti where our first param super computer param super computer has been invented by india so uh, they uh, there we were working on uh, how that super computer is um, means how it's working what is mean by cluster development how the data is gathered and how the computational methods has been carried out so it's a huge thing and a huge invention that india has did and i'm still learning on it and then cloud computing is the another technology and artificial intelligence is the another one where i have learned some i have did some courses so yes sir this is my journey right now if i any anything should i explain well first let me say it's a very inspiring story okay. thank and you sir. you have worked so hard and achieved so much uh, i had always felt that uh, today's indian young people including women are very hard working motivated and skilled and yes sir you have proved me right you have thank proved you, sir. right you know that's why i set up this channel because indian society has not realized it they have not caught up to this reality and they don't give the young people a platform a channel to showcase themselves to talk about themselves to explain what they've done 
because you know we are still in the old fashioned seniors talk juniors listen right but yes, yes. i think that time is over the juniors like you are very highly accomplished and uh, you know world class so why should they not have a platform and so here we are so i'm not going to ask you any question i'm going yes, to sir. say you go ahead and tell me what you want to tell me so as you have said that seniors are telling and juniors are listening so right now today i have visited my school i am residing in maker right now in district buldhana so where our teachers also felicitated me for being a delegate of india so there i have visited that school because of atal tinkering lab uh, it has been said by the niti ayog so nine standard students had came there and where i had given my speech but i learned something from them that now at this moment uh, Uh, by uh, setting up such kind of lab, uh, childrens are getting familiar with the new invention like AI, artificial intelligence. Then three D printing I have seen in that lab, and then drone technology. So this is a remote area. Maker is falling under the remote area and district Buldana, where we are having a lunar rover, that lunar crater. And then Ajanta and Elora caves also are there. So I'm living right now there. so that tinkering atal tinkering lab uh, have, they established uh, some kind of apparatus then robotics uh, robotics and 3d printing these kind of things i have seen so where i felt that yes now we are moving towards the innovation so children uh, have i mean children are having that kind of a tendency that rather than studying the bookish knowledge and innovative ideas should be produced inside them so if such kind of lab should be established in each and every state then obviously not only children but also the people living in the remote area they will be getting uh, motivated that yes we can do something if these labs has been set by the school after some time the, it it might be happened that the lab will be converted into a company it can be happened because the funding has been coming from the niti ayo and uh, uh, there a lot of people are also involved in it so this this can be happen that means in a remote area we would be establishing a, a company an it company which is uh, innovated or invented by the indian people by the indian mindset so recently i have uh, uh, i have mm-hmm. attended one webinar which has been conducted by ministry of external affair so i have been invited by ministry of external affair and department of economy so there uh, the chief ex- i mean the chief uh, chief economic advisor of our country so they discussed about the g20 i mean uh, yes so how um, how economy should be there um, by uh, means i mean what plan should be there uh, my gathering the information that has been uh, conducted in g20 summit so i think the main focus should be on research and development where india is still lacking so i think that if we focus on research and development then obviously as compared to the uh, countries which are um, i mean which are having the highest gdp and which are in a dev- developed space like uh european union then uh, uk so if we focus on this research and development then obviously we will be the best i mean we can achieve the trillion economy and then uh, another part is that the one webinar i have attended i don't know which uh, it has been also conducted by the government of india there i asked the question that where we are lacking right now are we are we really growing in it sector or what we are saying or are we uh, are we in a developing phase so the answer was from the panel that we are still uh, importing the material for the research and development it's not that, that we have own uh, produced in our country we are still importing some kind of technologies so here what's happening the fiscal deficit of our country the gap between the fiscal deficit sir <laughs> please tell me if i am getting wrong you know the concept very well about economy 
so if i would be getting wrong at some point so please correct me so the, i think the fiscal deficit because we are importing the maximum goods uh, for the technology so that that is has been the increasing as compared to the expenditure and the income that has been generated by our country so i found that uh, second thing i would like to focus on the agriculture sector so uh, the in agriculture sector though we are I means we are uh, i think the our share is not that too much as compared to the it sector so we we must have to focus on the agriculture sector and there we can use this kind of technology that for crop producing then for detecting what is in uh, what is the uh, life and of land I means how uh, land is working is it fertile or not then different kind of cropping pattern should be there so i gained this knowledge by attending various summit so they are also from the global forum uh, food forum summit which has been conducted by the germany berlin so there i understood that there are various techniques to which we can take the crops and we can change our cropping pa pattern habits so yes i think india should focus on such kind of uh, summit and they should take the ideas and then uh, then from g20 also it has been discussed that we should focus on the capacity building then multilateralism in banking system and there is there was one term credit rating so i didn't understand that what is credit rating but uh, the they were focusing on the credit rating and as well as imf reforms so our india is saying that uh, there should be some kind of changes in the imf reforms to come up with the multilateral banking system so which these are the key points that i have been learned from these summits well you have learned a lot outside your field so uh, congratulations well done all i can say is well done i don't yeah. want to spend time discussing those things i just want to hear from you what yeah, else yeah. What, are, what are your hobbies and all let's focus a little bit on the lighter side yeah. what do you do for fun so apart from these uh, i am also an athlete Yeah. so i have learned martial art right now <laughs> so uh, it helped me a lot then again i have joined one course from university of mumbai that is diploma in yoga where i learned what are the yoga and before that i was a uh, basketball player as well as chess player and i participated at state level in uh, 100 meter sprinting and 200 meter sprinting so these are my hobbies i used to give my timing for uh, uh, this martial art and then in evening these are my daily practices and again i would like to say the youth that uh, martial art is nothing but the kaliyari pattu that we were having uh, uh, in andhra pradesh that is from south so uh, even sir one more thing i would like to add recently sure. we know that <laughs> intangible cultural heritage uh, unesco so unesco is conducting the meeting of intangible cultural heritage where we were giving uh, the name to the places that these are falling under unesco categories like kumbh mela and then uh, there are various things so for that i have been approved right now so i just want to say that we have to uh, protect and preserve our culture because it's having something that we don't know and the science is also not reaching but whenever we are looking for the art for the design that has been there in temple architecture we know that how the temple architecture has been done by the previous people so if we learn and if we see that then we would be able to acquire that truth that knowledge what is hidden and what is not written even in our scriptures or what we we can't understand but by by visiting and by learning that i think we should preserve it then second thing and that's why that's why unesco is giving them as as a name in i mean as a protected area or a preserved site that this culture should be preserved and this should be transmitted to the generation so there i also found that dance is there sing uh, i mean uh, dance is one kind of uh, thing where we can practice yoga as well as dance but it's having a spiritual uh, meaning as well as a scientific meaning where our body and mind it unites and we can learn some more different things 
Okay. So after going through this phase, I understood that something is there where we have to understand our body, our mind, our social perspective as well, and what's happening around the world. So if we understand all these things, then we would be able to live a more good life. I mean, India will be able to live a balanced life and it could spread a message of peace, peace to the other country as well, because we are having that kind of art and culture, which cannot be found anywhere in the world. Okay. And uh, second thing through martial art, that is Kaliari Pattu. So martial art and Kung Fu that has been spreaded in China, Japan, and then I think in Korea, and also it has been spreading in European Union as well. But the origin is in our India. And our even prime minister is saying that yoga, uh, yoga should be spread in all over the countries. So uh, many people don't know that why we are spreading all these things. It is having some kind of values. And value means it is showing the art of living. But we are going away and we are not knowing that how to live this life right now. So Kaliari Pattu means you are understanding your own body, your own what is happening inside your body and you are becoming your own doctor. So these things are I think should be uh, motivated and should be teach everywhere with a proper technique so that rather than taking and uh, uh, even making the youth I mean, uh, a master in this kind of arts, in this kind of playing, so that they can compete in an Olympic level, at Olympic level, in Olympic games, and Commonwealth also. So in, in this way, we can flourish our India. I okay. think so. That's a very optimistic message. I'm happy to hear it. Any Thank tips you, you have for young people? So, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Right now, I know that young people are very intelligent. <laughs> I mean, they are having the hands-on training and various facilities and opportunities has been provided. But rather than believing on the orthodox thinking that has been implemented in the minds of the people, or if you find in the surrounding, don't believe in that. Then stay away from the social media. That's very crucial because Artificial intelligence means whatever the data you are gathering that has been shown in your mobile phone or, or whatever you are searching, but that's not the real and that's not the truth. So to know the truth that what, what is the life, you should stay away from the social media, from the uh, fake reality rather than the real reality. And the third thing is that Believe in your dreams, no matter how many times you will fail, you will be fail or you might not be fail, but sometime at any point, if, if you encounter a failure, then don't get depressed that what other people will say. It doesn't matter because at last your dream and your knowledge, they will give you, they will give you the way to reach to that height where the world will clap you. Because I myself has experienced that when you walk alone throughout this life, believing in your dreams, believing in your potential, then obviously, no matter whatever will be the situation in your life, you will succeed after a lot of failures. Because during my BE, sir, I have been failed for three years in first year. And now today, I became a delegate of India. Yeah. I have never ever thought that yeah. I would be talking in United Nations from a remote area. Yeah. And I would be completing my even master degree in engineering. So yeah. it was a dream, an impossible dream for me. Yeah. Good. Now I fulfilled. Yeah, no, you have you already proved me right. But what's your own future? What do you think? So I think I want to be a good human being right now. Whatever field I will choose from here after, no matter it will be a UN or it will be a research work, I'll give my best even in athlete. So uh, combining all these things and to become a good human being is my motive and to uh, give something to the society as well, a good thing, rather than indulging them in, in pre-considered thoughts. I would like to raise their conscience as the Jack Ma has been told, the entrepreneur Jack Ma, that you should contribute for the society to raise their consciousness. 
So this is my motive, sir, right now. And I would be focusing on that. Okay, that's excellent. I think, uh, do you have anything else you want to add here? No, sir, right now, I mean, it's a very good, uh, I mean, that you have taken my interview. Okay, good. Yeah, All right. At last, I would like to say that for you, that you should have a knowledge of your field as well, as well as the knowledge of international relation and art and culture of our country. Gathering all these things, uh, obviously, they would give you a height where you want to reach rather than believing the, uh, I mean, the old uh, thought pattern. A new thought pattern must be there. For that, we must focus on these kind of things, art, then your sports, your hobbies, and your new learning methods. Okay. All right. Yes, well, let's end it here. Perhaps we'll catch up with you one year from now and see what yes. you have achieved and what you are doing. For the moment, let's say bye to the viewers. I'll be back with another young expert or young Indian. Bye till then. Just say bye, please, Sonali. Bye. 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 And good wishes. <laughs> Thank you, sir.